Hello, and let's continue with chemistry. It is all that matters, and today we're going to look at geometric molecules, and we're going to look at geometric molecules through the VSEPR theory, and we'll explain exactly what VSEPR means in just a second. So let's get to work on our chemistry. Okay, this VSEPR theory is how we determine the shapes of molecules and ions. This is basically how are we going to see if it's a straight molecule, a bent mo molecule, if it's going to form a pyramid, uh, if it's going to form a crystal. This will help us to determine the actual molecular geometry that takes place between the atoms involved in the molecules. So what is this VSEPR theory or VSEPR theory? Well, VSEPR, V-S-E-P-R, stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion. So it's basically how are the electrons in the valence shell going to create a repulsion or an attraction that's going to allow for the formation of the molecule. And based on certain repulsion activities you will get certain angles to the bonds and those angles will create the shape of the molecule. Now why is it important to know this? Well it's important to know this because how the shape of the molecule is determines sometimes how the molecule acts. So it helps us to understand how certain molecules and ions will behave. Good example, it explains why water molecules are so good at dissolving ionic substances and not so good at dissolving covalent substances. But basically there is a shape to a water molecule and there's a repulsion that takes place in the molecules involved in water that allow water to do things that are adhesive and things that are cohesive and that's why water molecules will climb up a paper towel or surround ionic particles or why ice is less dense than liquid water. So all of these things play a role and it all is dependent upon the shapes of the molecules. Ever wonder why certain parts of the soap molecule attract dirt while others attract water? Uh, why do oil and grease separate from water? Uh, again, this has something to do with that geometric molecular shape that takes place based on how the atoms fit together. So, what is the process of doing this uh, VSEPR, V-S-E-P-R theory? Well, the first thing to do is determine the central atom. Now, usually the atom with the lowest subscript value or the atom capable of forming the most bonds will be the central atom. Then once you have the central atom, draw the electron dot structure or the stick diagram. In doing that, we will see how many atoms are bond bound to that central atom. Determine the molecular geometry using all of the electron pairs and atoms that surround that central atom. And this is called calculating the steric number. Now the steric number is the number of atoms that surround the central atom plus the number of unshared pairs. So the number of atoms that are surrounding that central atom plus what we're going to count as unshared pairs. So we have this nice little chart here and this chart has been posted on your blackboard so you can download it as a PDF and this chart will help us to determine the geometric shapes that take place based on the steric numbers. So we're going to take the steric number and we're going to take the lone pairs and using that we will determine the shapes of each molecule. So if you have a steric number of two, meaning two atoms attached to the central, and there are zero lone pairs, you are going to get a linear molecule as opposed to if you have two attached plus a lone pair your steric number would be three 
and that one lone pair determines that it's going to be bent, but it's going to be bent at a 120 degree angle. If you have a steric number of four and two lone pairs, you get a bent molecule, but that bent molecule is going to be at an angle of 109. And each of these determines the shape and structure geometrically of the molecules we're going to be dealing with. So let's look at how this process works. So let's take an example of beryllium dihydride. Beryllium and hydrogen, BEH2. So our central atom is going to be the BE because it only has one atom. It is the lowest subscript value. And when you attach BE to hydrogen, BE has 1s2, so each of those electrons from 1s2, or 2s2, sorry, will bond with one hydrogen each, and you will get this arrangement from the electron dot. The stick diagram or bar diagram looks like this. Note that beryllium violates the octet rule. This is an exception, as will be lithium and boron. And we will move forward to determine the steric number. So there are two atoms attached to the central atom, and there are zero unshared pairs, giving us a steric number of two. So we look on the chart, and we notice that we have two for our steric number. We have zero lone pairs, so we are going to get a linear molecule with BE in the middle attached to two hydrogens, and that is going to be a 180 degree straight linear molecule. Let's look at an example of boron with fluorine, and this is a BF3 molecule. The central atom, again, will be boron because it only has one atom. Boron is 2s2, 2p1, having three electrons, and those three electrons will be shared with each of the fluorines because fluorine has seven valence electrons. Notice that the boron, again, violates the rule of octet, but the fluorines do not. And what we end up in the bar diagram is we have boron attached to the three fluorines. Each of the lines surrounding the fluorines represents two of those electrons. When we count the steric number, uh, there are three atoms attached to the central atom, each of the three fluorines, zero unshared pairs because there is no unshared pair on the top of boron. Therefore, our steric number is three. So steric number of three with zero unshared lone pairs, we end up with a trigonal planar molecule. And the fluorines will be equally distributed around the boron at 120 degrees. Now note that 120 degrees and there are three angles created, so that gives you a circle of 360 degrees surrounding that boron atom. Let's look at an example of methane, CH4. Carbon will be the central atom. It has four bonding sites, plus it is only one uh, in the subscript value in the molecule. And when we take a look at the Lewis dot diagram or the bar diagram, we have carbon in the center, and we have four at hydrogens equally distributed around it. When we count the steric number, there are four atoms attached to the central atom, zero unshared pairs, so the steric number is four. We now look at steric number of four, lone pair of zero. We have a tetrahedral, tetrahedral having four hydrogens distributed around the carbon, and each of those will be at an angle of 109 degrees from each other. So we will end up with 109 degrees, creating a pyramid on the bottom with one coming out of the top. And so this forms a tetrahedral. Ammonia, NH3. Nitrogen is the atom in the middle because it is only one atom in the molecule, but also has three bonding sites. The electron dot shows three hydrogens 
bound to the nitrogen and nitrogen has a lone pair on the top so when we do our steric count three atoms attached to the central atom one unshared pair giving us a steric value of four with a steric value of four and one lone pair we get a bent or angular um, molecule with each of the three hydrogens uh, forming a pyramid opposite of the lone shared pair and each of those molecule atoms will be 109 degrees away from each other. So continuing with your practice, um, here are some examples that you need to do at home. You will also be working on these in class, so just so you can take a look ahead at some of the molecules you will be determining their geometric shapes for. So go ahead and keep working on your chemistry.